Now we know some wines are best served chilled and others at room temperature, but did you know the same is true with beer? Ah, but it is, but you know, when the temperature is actually cooler, you may actually enjoy a warmer full body beer instead of a brew in a frozen mug. All right, so we're going to break it all down for you here to help us choose what type of beer you should drink at different temperatures is Brandon King of the Stout Brothers Beer Markets. Brandon, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. It smells great in here, doesn't it? I mean, this is a great aroma. Very fragrant. Uh, so where do we start? Um, we know different beers for different seasons, right? Um, well, I mean, every every season has its own beer that people prefer to drink, whether that's because of uh, ingredients or temperature. Um, but uh, uh, this season right now, there's a lot of fresh hop uh, beers out there because mm -hmm. a lot of uh, hops are especially out of the north uh, northwest are coming into season. So you'll have a lot fresher, greener uh, IPAs uh, is something that's focused as well as lots of pumpkin beers for the season. What is the framework in terms of, of the type of beer and the temperatures? I mean, I guess all, all beers obviously not the same. You would want to drink this ice cold, would you? No, no, you're correct. Uh, and a, kind of a, a rule of thumb I've always looked at is uh, how it's born is how it should be drank. So uh, beers such as, as these two here were um, fermented in at cold temperatures because that's the best temperature for that yeast to uh, uh, to produce that as to where these are done at a warmer temperature hence they're better to be drank at warmer temperatures. That's interesting how it's born is how it should be drank I love that it yeah. makes it a little easier but then how so you know tell us how do we um, how, how do you know just by looking at it I mean what's is it the color? Uh, well no color can be very deceiving because uh, you'll find there's uh, I mean there's dark lagers uh, that should be drank very cold but yet they look like a stout um, because they were, uh, they'll be a lot thinner. Uh, typically, the more, the bigger flavors uh, that you have are the should be definitely drank warmer, uh, just because you're, uh, uh, the more flavor needs more room to move around and jump around in your palate. Yeah, whoever the dude or dudette happened to be who created beer had to be a weird, weird person. I mean, just to have all these things come together. Hey, it's been a weirdness. We've had some Monks, really, really weird. Oh yeah, we've had some really, <laughs> really weird weather. How has the drought been affecting? some of these brews? Um, well, I mean, droughts, uh, at least here in Georgia, uh, will affect uh, really hop production uh, mm -hmm. more than they affect anything else. Uh, so it really depends on whether or not they're sourcing their hops locally or if they're sourcing them from Australia or mm -hmm. the West Coast or, or what have you. Uh, really, the, uh, the part of uh, the segment of beer that will be most affected here locally will be ciders. So places like uh, Mercier uh, Cidery up in Blue Ridge have uh, uh, because of that drought have really put a strain on the uh, the apple plants making the apples better and sweeter and and uh, more vibrant just like they would with uh, with wine production with is there is there anything that says a beer is stronger has a higher alcohol content whether it's cold or warm uh, based I mean typically your warmer beers are almost always going to be um, or your high alcohol beers will be better drank warm mainly because those are made to, to age longer um, and they're also using a lot more ingredients and going to have a lot more flavor. And sort of sip slowly and enjoy the complexity yes. of it. Yes, absolutely. There's yeah. definitely some, some beers out there that should be drank uh, akin to how you would drink a whiskey. Oh, very nice. Good times. So, Brandon, we're about to run out of time. Very quickly, sure. the type of beers that we have here are going to wind up. Uh, okay, so uh, we'll start here. This is uh, a very uh, ubiquitous, uh, <laughs> large... <laughs> tailgate uh, kind of beer. Tailgate yeah. kind of beer um, out from our friends in St. Louis. Uh, this is uh, uh, <laughs> Weinsteffen uh, out of uh, Germany. Tattered is kind of one of the oldest breweries around, and this is a uh, Pilsner. Uh, then moving down, we have. And you gave us real quick. You gave us a neat tidbit about German beers and you know uh, Oktoberfest that they Ooh, needed yes. the cooler months to brew. Yeah, that's uh, kind of uh, everybody thinks you celebrate Oktoberfest in October. You actually celebrate in September because the point is to finish off all of the beer that were in the tanks from your brewing in March because you couldn't brew during those warmer months. Again. The yeast activates in colder yeah. months, and it, it ferments better that way. So they had to finish off and knock out all the barrels and get very intoxicated in order to be prepared <laughs> for the next, uh, next round.